What's up, FishTankTV.com and YouTube? It's Wayne with Wayne's Fish World. Another episode of Wayne's Insight. In this episode, I'm going to be teaching you about CO2 in the Planet Aquarium. A lot of you guys out there want to get some CO2, but as you see, there's a lot of methods of CO2. And the best method is expensive, and that's pressurized CO2. It is expensive, though. And a lot of newbies, a lot of hobbyists that are younger in this hobby do not have the money to go out and buy pressurized CO2. And there are other ways. You can go with a DIY CO2 recipe, which I'm about to show you, or you can go with a liquid fertilizer CO2, which is actually not a gas form of CO2. It's a liquid form of carbon, which acts as the carbon essential in your water column for the plants to absorb carbon. So, CO2. What's so great about CO2 in the Planet Aquarium? CO2 basically acts as the, it's, it's our oxygen to plants. Their CO2, their carbon dioxide is our oxygen. And without a vital amount of CO2 in the aquarium, your plants aren't going to thrive and they're not going to grow. With more CO2, they can grow better, they can thrive, and they can meet conditions they couldn't without CO2. So, without further delay, I'm going to show you how to do it. First of all, you're going to need... The first thing you're going to need in your CO2 is a plastic bottle. You want to find a plastic bottle that's durable and doesn't bend easily so it can withstand the pressure of the CO2. All depending on your tank size, you want to get a bigger bottle for bigger tanks and smaller bottles for smaller tanks. Next up is your baking soda. You can find baking soda at Food Line most likely. <clears throat> baking soda gives the yeast more duration time so you get more CO2. You also want to get some yeast, some activated yeast. This is what you're feeding, and the product of the yeast is the CO2, and the CO2 feeds the plants. Next up is sugar. In my recipe, I'm going to use two cups of sugar. A measuring cup and a funnel. That way you can get proper measurements and not make a mess. We're going to use a spoon to measure activated yeast and baking soda. Also for transporting the CO2 into your aquarium, you want to get some airline tubing, poke a hole through the top of the cap, use silicone to seal it up to get an airtight seal, then run the airline through tubing through. In my case, I'm using a I'm using a BioCube protein skimmer for wooden air stone. Now we're ready to mix up the CO2 recipe. First of all, you want to take your your bottle use your funnel and get some sugar in my case I'm gonna get two cups of sugar and I'm gonna use a funnel to pour the sugar into the bottle I'm using two cups of sugar for a gallon bottle don't put two cups of sugar in a two liter or smaller or bigger. You'll need to change the recipe, but in my case, this is for a gallon bottle, two cups of sugar. Right now, I can use the funnel to gently pour the sugar into the bottle. After I pour all the sugar into the bottle, I'm going to need to bring it to the sink. You do not want scalding hot water, but you want at least double the tank temperature's water. So if you've got a temperature of, say, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, you'll need a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit or somewhere in that range. You want warm water to activate the yeast in the sugar. Now that you've got your scalding hot water, shake it up a bit to mix it up. Now that the sugar is all mixed up into our recipe, we want to take our baking soda and use our spoon to, exact, to get exactly one tablespoon, I repeat, one tablespoon of baking soda. Add it to your funnel and mix it in with the mixture. And you can see I dropped a little, so I'm going to get a little, little more and put it right in there with it. Next up is our yeast. A lot of people get the yeast mixed up. What you want to do is get a half of a tablespoon of yeast. You don't want to put too much yeast in there because if you put too much yeast in there, it's going to eat up its food source. The yeast is actually alive and we're feeding the yeast and it's eating the sugar and the baking soda is kind of prolonging the, the fermentation longer. So you want to use half a tablespoon of yeast. The, le the least you use, the longer it will last. Now we're ready to go ahead and put our cap on. 
you want to make sure the cap is snugly on. You don't want to break the cap, but you want to make sure it's an airtight seal. Make sure your silicone is dry before you activate your recipe, because if it's not dry, the CO2 will leach out and just push the the wet silicone away, and you'll never have an airtight seal. Make sure it's on there very snug. Now what I'm going to do is take my BioQ protein skimmer wooden airstone block and submerge it in the water for a while. I learned that if you put the airstone on automatically with the airline tubing at the same time into the system, the wooden airstone kind of makes a backward siphon. It pushes air up because air has to go up and escape, but it also goes into the airline tubing and it forces water, kind of like a under gravel filter or a sponge filter, it forces water up and that water will go inside your airline tubing and make it harder for the CO2 to escape. Eventually it will, but if your, if your sealant, your silicone isn't strong enough, it might break the sealant from all the pressure. So you want to make sure you do not have any air left in your airstone. That way no water gets in your airline tubing. Especially if your CO2 is on the ground and makes a back siphon. Now we're ready to go downstairs into my sump. Now this is just temporary. I will make a DIY spray bar onto my system where the CO2 can have a CO2 diffuser inside of it. And you can see I am going to put a filter on this CO2 diffuser. If you don't have a filter, some of that yeast and some of that sugar and stuff will leach back into your system. I'm going to set it down here, that way I don't get a back siphon, and I'm going to take my wooden air stone and put it right under my return pump. This way, those micro bubbles get sucked right into that return pump. Those micro bubbles will get chopped up and go right back into the system as diffused CO2. The micro bubbles weren't small enough. Well, they they were good enough, but now they're going to be even smaller. That way the plants can get that much more CO2. I gotta warn you though, if CO2 can be dangerous, you want to monitor it. CO2 will lower your pH. It's just, you know, biology. It'll lower your pH. Calcium will raise your pH. You want to make sure you monitor your pH, that your pH does not drop too low and kill your fish and take out your plants. Comment, rate, subscribe. If you have any more questions, let me know. Later.